Welcome to the Big Motor Small Blade Podcast. I'm Buddy Poli. I'm Seth Dolby. You don't have to. Okay, cool. I'm I'm Chuck. Chase Folsom. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. Cool. I have a name, uh, believe it or not. Yeah. No, it's Chuck. It's, it's it Chuck. No, no it's, one cares. It's always Chuck. It's always Chuck. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm Buddy Poli, fan of former NASCAR driver Kevin Harvick. Um, yep. Phoenix, it happened. It's real weird. I still don't really know if I believe it, but <laughs> it happened. Um, yeah, we got back from Phoenix today. I don't know about you, Seth. I'm a little jet lagged. I don't even really know what that means. Daylight savings time is a thing. And yeah, I'll be honest, my schedule's already kind of fucked. So like yeah. Going back in time a little doesn't really affect me as bad. Going back in time. Okay. That's, what, that's what I call it, yes. All right, yeah. Daylight uh, savings didn't bother me because I was still up. So. I'm not, we're not talking about daylight savings. We're talking about flying across oh, the well, country. I'm talking about daylight factor. savings. <laughs> that definitely had a factor in it. Um, yeah, we went to Phoenix. Um, I got in. I had a fucking flight got delayed Thursday. That was a whole rigmarole. But um, Friday was awesome i uh got those uh infield garage passes and stood at kevin's garage stall for like three hours straight and just watched everything and took nine million photos dude it yeah (laughs) um just watched the fucking do everything like prep the car prep you know stickers for um for practice do i mean just do everything and it was just just trying to soak it all in like and then kevin came to the car and we all know me so i lost it a little bit um (laughs) and it was just a whole thing but yeah i don't know phoenix is a fucking cool track it is i i thoroughly enjoyed my experience at the facility Yeah. yeah it was i mean it was just it's a nice track everything's like easy to get to It it feels like a championship racetrack. The race, on the other hand, um, not particularly, but I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's just they have done a very nice job at making it like just it. It is a top tier facility. Yeah, right up there with with like a Daytona, um, type deal. Obviously, they did the renovations, but yeah, um. I mean, obviously, it was the same renovation, so a lot of it did feel a lot like Daytona um, yeah. from an experience standpoint. Obviously, it's it's in a desert instead of, <laughs> yeah. instead of the Dude, beach. Phoenix <laughs> is a nice area. Yeah, no. Um, I think that might be the most aesthetically pleasing place I've ever been in. I was shocked, too. I was so shocked. Well, Where did like, you guys stay at? We stayed in Glendale. With uh, with our buddy Caleb, shout out Caleb. Yeah, but just like everything, I don't know. It's just it's so cool. It's like a kind of a culture shock, I guess. Like, yeah, there's no trees. All you know, not there's no trees, but trees aren't everywhere. It's orange and brown, and just there's a film. There's like a haze of film, like dust everywhere. It's like the the opening scene of Days of Thunder, like all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean it. It was it was fun. I didn't. I did not touch a cactus. I saw many cactuses, cacti, cactuses, cacti, cacti. cacti. Um, yeah, um, I did not touch any of them. I thought about it, but took my advice for once. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, very uh, emotional weekend. I guess we'll talk about a little bit about that later. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, just a fun, fun weekend all around. Um, yep. definitely think Seth and I will want to go back. Chuck, you've been there a couple of times. Did you come walk, walk out there. Make a I'll go up. again. Yeah, I had fun. I actually stayed when I went. I went in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. I actually stayed in the same hotel in surprise uh it's called surprises oh two years in a row. <laughs> like, no, it's, it, it's called surprise it's um it's only like 
I'm, I I have to look at a map to see where it is in relation where you guys were, but it's only like 20 minutes from the track max if there's traffic. So yeah, dude, I wasn't very far. It's there. It's like one of those things where technically it's like another sub division area of the yeah. greater Phoenix area. Pretty much yeah. is all it is. Um, so. Yeah, dude, there were a shit ton of people there this weekend. Yeah. Like, good Lord. I ain't seen that, like, and it, it didn't help, like, the parking lot, it, like, goes for, like, 74 miles, like, out, like, I didn't realize also how, like, in the middle of nowhere, like, a lot of tracks are in the middle of nowhere, but it's, like, it's in the middle of nowhere, straight in, a, in the, there's mountains over here, mountains over here, mountains over here, and then the racetrack right in the middle, yeah, like, it's crazy, it's crazy, it was no just really, yeah, didn't see any rattlesnakes. Thank God. Which I was bummed about. I wanted to see one. I didn't want to touch one, just like the cactus. I didn't want to touch. I just wanted to see, and I didn't see any, so I was disappointed by that. But um, uh, really enthusiastic about how many people were at the truck and Xfinity races. Yeah, uh, that yeah. was that was great. <laughs> I mean, there were people everywhere. Yeah, like the truck race was actually, I'd say six, um, I'd say seventy percent full. Yeah, it's probably about right. And then there was a bunch of people down in the infield too. Like their infield, like the inf- fan shield, the infield, whatever the fuck experience it's called. It is like that is awesome. Like it is, I mean, it's much it's a lot like uh if you've ever been to Talladega, um that that infield thing they got. And but it's I mean, you are right there. And it is I don't know, they just they've done it is a so we we talk about like last week we talked about Martinsville and how just the way it is. Yeah. Obviously, you can't do that at Martinsville because you know how small it is. But just it's a good example of how you can make a racetrack better. And yeah. I really I do appreciate that racing aside at Phoenix. Um, appreciate how that was. We did sit next to a bunch of hot dogs. That was. That was odd. That was that odd. Was, that was real. Explain. Good. Yeah, there was, there was a, a... there's like seventy four. There's like seventeen people dressed in hot dogs sitting in front of us. <laughs> what? Yeah, dude. I don't know. I don't know. One of them like <laughs> deep throated Caleb's like microphone what on day? his headset. Like, huh? What day? At the truck race. I mean, where else? Of course, it's the <laughs> truck race. Like, oh yeah. I mean, it just, it fit uh, with the aesthetic of the truck race. You just kind of didn't course. know what the fuck was going on the whole time, <laughs> but. <laughs> It was just a bunch of hot dogs, and you didn't know, and you're just kind of confused. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Seth and I also discovered that we need to get headsets where we could talk to each other because Caleb had those, and that was exist. maybe the most fun. Like us, yes, those do. Caleb, exist, Chuck. Seth, and I That's talking cool. back and forth to each other. Yeah, yeah. We decided that we need to get some, <laughs> and we can figure out a way to record it and upload it. <laughs> Because we're gonna do live race podcasts yeah we're gonna yeah there we're gonna do go. live well i guess it won't be live because i think well, we can get in trouble for that, we're recording but... them live and then yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out how this works uh yeah sure yeah way. yeah um i no i can't tell the michael watcher story uh, no <laughs> no that was that's a big mo- that's small blade after dark <laughs> um anyway um yeah, I mean, I don't even know if it fit on After Dark. I, I don't. Yeah, I think that's that's on the black and orange version of the yeah. of the podcast. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, We've never ventured into that territory before, at least not in a, since first, I've been here. First yeah, time for everything. Here. <laughs> okay, a second time oh, yeah. for everything. Um. Anyway, I have something to add to this, so I'm assuming. You guys didn't go to the hill at all while you were there? No, we no. did not go. To, we did not go to Rattlesnake Hill. So from my experience there, that's where I had to sit in 2020 because, you know, COVID happened and they took away all of our tickets and we're like, well, you can sit here if you want. So we got refunded and rebought our tickets anyway. If you've been to Phoenix and you've never sat on Rattlesnake Hill, do it at least once because it's awesome. It's not the most right. cl- it's not the most close up view of the track and you can see everything. It's just 
everything almost kind of looks a little farther away, especially in videos. You don't realize how far away one and two, I guess now three and four, sorry. Um, but kind of like the, the view, if, if you do it, do it on a Saturday for an Xfinity race. Because as the sun sets, it literally sets over top of the grandstands with the mountains in the background. And it's the coolest thing I've ever watched in my life. So highly recommend if you ever go back to Phoenix again and you go for a weekend for anybody listening, watch at least one race from the hill, bring a lawn chair. But uh, yeah, do that because it's awesome. And it's the most aesthetically pleasing view in racing, in my opinion. Here's the one thing, though, I did want to say. Um I think my the the best thing about the actual design of the the facility is the fact that even when it's hot out the sun the way they position the grandstands is perfect for the sun to go directly behind it and everything is shaded. Yeah. So yeah. it was so comfortable. Top like, tier engineering the whole, right there. Yeah, it was so comfortable the whole weekend cuz like you're pretty much always in the shade. It was yeah. fantastic. It was it I tell you what the facility and just the weather and like everything reminded me a lot of homestead like it 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 really did it <clears throat> just the the time of year obviously it's the same time of year but it like um just the way the sun sets and just the aesthetics of everything and the the upkeep and the the state of the artness of the facility is just it's really good really good um so yeah phoenix i think should definitely stay at least the final two races of the year preferably the second to last one but um (laughs) but uh no i think they they've earned their they i i will give them this the racing's not fantastic there we'll talk about that they have earned their they earned their right to at least get a chance at having the championship race. Yeah. Because they, they put a hell of a lot of work in and they did a great 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 job with it. Obviously, our opinion is the only one that matters. And now that we've said it, Phoenix has officially made it. Um, but yeah, no. Okay. That's um uh, yeah. Moving on, it's time for the Chase Folsom short track segment oh, i don't know what that we're gonna call yeah this. we haven't i, I we don't haven't know we haven't out, decided yet we haven't figured out what what we're gonna call this yet um he's our like walmart brand hannah newhouse <laughs> um he's a lot less cute and sorry his mustache, his mustache is a little bushier so yeah go ahead yeah. Chuck. so i guess we'll start with some uh world of outlaws since i went on thursday and friday unfortunately couldn't go saturday so, but woo! um so woo um so, as some people may know, I'm a late model guy, and these two here are sprint car guys. And I have big motor, big blade, baby. Let's I, I have a big problem with what I watched on Thursday and Friday with the late models. Oh, because Ooh. as much as I hate to say it, the sprint cars put on a great race, and actually. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh actually, it's almost right. like they always do. And actually, that's not true. That's and so actually, true. so did the big block modifieds. Sprint cars make my dick hard. All right. Well, this section is now <laughs> rated R. Um, when I hear sprint cars, I go. Anyway, the late models on Thursday and Friday sucked. And I've talked to some people about it and there's a lot of things that are wrong with it because Charlotte is so big and fast. And honestly, it just tears up motors for the late models, unfortunately. And there's not much they can do with that track with those cars because the track only gets run on once a year and they have to run the late models last behind the modifieds in the sprint cars or else the track would be destroyed for any of the other series that go behind them, which in turn means by the time the late models get out there, on Thursday and Friday night, when the features are only 25 laps, they run around the bottom for 25 laps. And it's the most boring train you've ever watched in your life. I've been to plenty of racetracks and I've never seen a racetrack put on a worse display of what late model racing is in dirt than Charlotte. And the only things that can really be done is either a run the crap out of the track year long, which they're not going to do because world finals pays for itself to keep the track running or B 
reshape the track to where there's more progressive banking so they can run the top. And I don't think they're going to do that either because I don't think they actually care what the product is because World Finals is more of just a three-day dirt racing party than it is an actual display of good racing. So and I don't on. have a problem with that. Hang on. But... I, I am not an aficionado of, of late model dirt racing, but I don't remember the races last year being bad. I remember enjoying the one yeah. on yeah, I Saturday mean, at least. I... Personally, it might. I wonder if it was just the track conditions for this year, because like I, as much as Seth and I shit on late models, I did think the the track was pretty pretty good last year. I it, I don't know if this is like normal, but like I've seen been to two World Finals. Seth just showed me pictures and videos from twenty twenty. I, is it just Charlotte that the track conditions change like so drastically from year to year? Yeah. Chuck? Yeah. Okay. It's just Charlotte because they only run there for two weeks out of the year. They okay. run the short track world championship the week before world finals. And then they show up and run world finals. And then the track sits there for 350 days before they show up next year. And they don't have to run anything else on it because those two weeks of racing more than pay for themselves just in tickets to keep the place running. And the the late models there, they are either like, okay, so last year, the last night that all three of us were there, it was a great show. But part of the reason it was a great show is because it started raining halfway through the race. So the track took water and slicked up again and they moved up top. Sure, I forgot about okay. that. And then yeah. Davenport started ripping the boards and went from like ninth to first. This year, they tried and tried and tried and they went out there and put water down and pack the track and put water down and pack the track. And Thursday night, they actually did it after every feature. And it was it, also a lot warmer this year in my, than it has been in the past couple of years, right? No. Last year was warm. warm. I guess I was in Phoenix all You weekend. were in Phoenix. <laughs> it was a solid <laughs> it was a solid 35 degrees by the time I left both nights. Oh, it was fuck freezing. That. Holy it was shit. Freezing. <laughs> freezing cold and from what okay. i saw saturday was actually a decent race but the difference with saturday is they run 50 laps so they wear out the bottom and then they some yeah. of them move up top so it just sucks because the late like i said the late models have to go last and then on nights where they only run 25 laps and the tracks already beat the crap and the sprint cars and modifieds have already brought in the bottom and worn out the top well, then it just becomes a 25 car train around the bottom. And you saw it both nights. Marler literally ran the bottom all night for 25 laps. And I think he got around Overton on the first lap on the outside. And then he moved to the bottom and they ran in a train like that behind lap traffic for the rest of the race. And on for Friday night, same thing happened. The only reason. Ricky Thornton got around Chris Madden was because Madden got really loose and drifted up off two. Thornton got underneath him and like, that was it. That was the race. They caught Tanner English and ran behind him for 20 laps or not 20 laps, probably about 10, 15 laps to end the race hmm. and nobody could pass. So. The same, well, so how did the sprint cars race? So Thursday night, Thursday night was really weird because they all started up top and then Brad Sweet found the bottom and started passing everybody. And he went all the way from like fifth to the lead. And then he gave up on the bottom and gravel and Rico went back by. Hmm. And they all kind of ran the bottom from there. And the difference with sprint cars is I'll give them this. If everybody's on the bottom with sprint cars, it's not a train because there's more room for error. Yeah. And they're, and they're less, it's crazy because they're more aero dependent, but they're less aero sensitive. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, if somebody's running in front of them, it does like in a late model. If somebody's running in front of you, it screws you. And yeah, a sprint car, like no, a and a sprint car, time. yeah, and a sprint car, not nearly as much. And then on Friday night, they just ripped the boards all night, and it was funny because it was three non-outlaw guys that did it. It was Brent Marks, Justin Peck, and Tyler Courtney, and they put on a hell of a show. But um, shout all out right. to the mod, shout out to the modifies. They were fun to watch all weekend too. But yeah, it just bothers me that. The biggest one of the biggest stages for late model racing, they just kind of put on a dud and then they get a bad rep for it. But um, um who who so give real quick, give us the champions. Oh, 
Well, Ricky Thornton proved he should have been the Lucas Oil champion instead of the BS that Lucas Oil put on at Eldora. Yeah. Because uh, he won two out of three. But Bobby Pierce is the late model champion this year. Uh, Matt Shepard just won his 10th modified championship. And he's Superman or rocket ship. Now he's, he's Superman. Superman, Well, super Matt, super Matt. Davenport Superman. Rocket Shep was always Brandon Shepard, but now he doesn't have a rocket. So he's just B Shep. Um, And then Brad Sweet just absolutely boot ganged the outlaws for his fifth championship and is leaving now. So that's awkward. Woo. Yeah. Speaking of that. Boom confetti. High limit schedule comes out tomorrow. Praying there's a North Carolina or South Carolina race on there. Oh, that'd be That's awesome. one thing I wanted to say before we before you talk about Cars Tour is, please, if you're in North Carolina, World Finals obviously is every year. Go to it. Support dirt racing in the Southeast because we need Absolutely. more of it. Support sprint car racing in the Southeast because we need more of it. You I'll say like late models in the Southeast. So yeah. I'll, well, I'll <laughs> further that and say support all of it, because I don't know if you guys know this or not, but over the past four or five years, there is no longer a national touring event in either of the Carolinas for the late models now, other than world finals. They've left Cherokee. They've mm-hmm. left Fayetteville. They left friendship. They left Lancaster. So people, if they want them back, people need to show up. We're getting an XR event at the newly owned. It's, not it's ultimate motorsports park now it used to be friendship motor speedway um the folks that own jimmy owens car in the late model world the kohlers they own that track now and they are doing a lot of work to it so we're getting a big late model event back in north carolina and i don't care that it's february and it's going to be like 20 degrees outside go support it um cars tour cars tour uh i just want to say congrats to the quapple brothers for sweeping the cars tour championships that's pretty cool um Carson all he needed to do was run 16th he ran 11th so uh Butterbean did everything he had to do to have a shot he led all 125 laps won the pole got the extra two bonus points yeah damn got the extra bonus points for leading a lap and the most laps in fact nobody else like I said nobody else even led a lap so he did everything he had to do and I haven't looked to see the updated final standings but it's less than 10 points it was close. He had a hell of a comeback to end the year. Um, and Caden actually said that he's not going to run Cars Tour next year. He's moving to Supers next year, so he's going to run some ASA stuff. So Interesting. That'll be cool to watch him do that. Carson said he'll be back in the 8 car next year. Uh, Butter Butterbean will be back in the 03. Connor Hall, your national late model champion, is moving over to Nelson Motorsports from the 22. And we still don't have a car store schedule yet. That was supposed to come out deadline Saturday, and we still don't know. So hmm. pa- impatiently, patiently waiting on that. Well, um, the, the owners have been a little bit busy. Yeah, I guess so, right? <laughs> no, they gave out dates on Saturday in the driver's meeting, but they haven't given out tracks yet there's supposedly one event on there that's supposed to shock everyone so daytona we'll see <laughs> we'll see what it is and, uh, ring. cool so cars yeah. quapple Caden quapple car store champions yeah and i thought i was done uh i thought i was done with my short track coverage for this year but as of well pending email that i sent earlier I will be covering the South Carolina 400. So yeah, yeah. that's cool. I'll get to hopefully talk to Josh Berry and Dale Jr. So. Man, that means you can't come to the parking lot and watch us drink beer. Nobody said I couldn't do that. All right. Where do you think I'm watching the race from? Oh, okay. The parking, right, lot? Just, hey. the parking lot. Heck yeah. No, I'll watch with you guys. Right. But yeah, as just, far as make sure you're still hanging out with us at South Carolina 400. Absolutely. But pending that email, I will be also working. Dale so. Jr. and Josh Berry are racing in that. So if you have flow, watch it. If you're in the South Carolina area, come to it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, some more guys sign up for Josh that. Josh Berry's too. running Kevin Harvick's car. So you know who I'm pulling for. Well, you got a tough decision. No, I'm pulling don't. for Josh Berry all the way, baby. All right. Yeah. That's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Josh that. Like, 
you were junior's crew chief for the last two years. Now you're going to race against him. What's that going to be like? Yeah, exactly. Hey, man. Hey, look, junior was my favorite retired guy. No longer. <laughs> no longer. Just junior's like, car looks cool, though. Have you it, seen it's it? Good looking, yeah. It's a good looking car. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Right. Just cool. tell Josh, like, hey, he wrecked you at Homestead. So, yeah. Give it to him. <laughs> All right. Cool. With that. All right. Move on that to NASCAR. Chuck's stuff. short track report yet to be named. We'll figure one out for next year. Um, now to some, uh, to some <laughs> significantly worse, uh, displays of, uh, racing, um, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series or the NASCAR Crapman Truck Series. <laughs> I tried to make a pun out of that. It didn't really work. Um, but they I think we all get the gist. deserve that honor. Huh? They don't even yeah, deserve they, that honor. Dude, this was the sorriest damn truck race I've been to. And that's saying something. This, this series is a joke. It's, it is, it is it's an absolute that joke. Way. Huh? I said it's become that way. It wasn't yeah. always this bad. I mean, Arca's terrible. I watched the damn Arca race on Thursday, on Friday. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I saw Sean fucking whatever the hell his last name is. That King douchebag. Ronnie? Yeah, him. Saw him win the Arca championship. I don't like that kid's face. Um, Mercifully, my, my plane <laughs> Neither had do a lot of other people. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, and then the truck my race. plane hadn't gotten in in time to watch the Arca race, so that was good. Yeah, <laughs> um, got saved. Okay, let's break it down. So let me get my notes up here. Um, obviously we all saw what happened. Carson Ferrari spun Corey Heim, and then Corey Heim got retaliation on him. Um, wasn't intentional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm just saying. I've been watching Corey live. Heim, I think I've my direct. I think my direct tweet was Corey Heim. There's a post that said he did not mean to do. He did not mean to wreck uh, Carson Hussebar. And I commented on said tweet and said yes. And Bill did not have sexual relations with that woman. Chuck, are you too young to know what that means? No, <laughs> I I saw something that was like. I don't know which one it was about, whether it was about Carson or Corey, what they did. But it was basically somebody saying, oh, well, it, it just didn't stick. And Landon Huffman quote tweeted it and said, yeah, my Corolla wouldn't stick either if I hooked a right at 75 on I-40 towards a sign. Oh, shit. My God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, dude, look. Do we think Carson wrecked him on purpose? No. I know. I don't, I don't no. think he did either. I, I think that judging in by his camera, mannerism. I think in judging, car camera is enough. Yeah, I mean, just judging by that and just how his mannerisms and his interviews after the race, it just see I mean, the dude was pounding the steering wheel and yelling at himself in the truck right after it happened. Like that doesn't seem like a guy that went in there and dumped him. Unless he's a hell unless Carson Osbar's like the greatest theater kid there's ever been in the whole fucking world. Um I could see that. Yeah. Um well Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> there's reasons for that. Yeah. I mean but what Corey Heim dude, Corey Heim's a jackass. Like, let's just like I hope sponsors and owners and everybody takes note of that. Because that was some of the most sorry, no good, like one of the worst things I've seen in a long time. Even for the damn truck series. Yeah. I mean, because like, I don't know, the more I've like sat on it and thought about it, the more pissed off I've become of that. Because I mean, yeah, Carson's done some shit. Like, there's no denying that. He's right hooked people. He's done a lot. He's cooled down a little bit lately. Martinsville was a little iffy. Um, But like, Dude, I get it. You you're mad you got spun out. Whatever. But like at least when Carson did it, when he spun you out on purpose or not, that was that was it. That was for the objective of the race. That was to win the championship. Like, so on purpose or not, you're racing hard for for that. Did like Corey Heim, what he did, it's a prime it's a prime example of like kids these days and thinking they're bigger than the sport. Like it, I just it's got all done about, writing about it this week. Uh, yeah. It, it's ridiculous. Cause I mean, he completely fucked grand Enfinger with yeah. no regard 
just yeah. for his little punk ass side quest. Yeah, that like, that that's what made me the most upset. Honestly, like, it's just I mean, just no acknowledgement <laughs> for the fucking moment, and like, I don't know. It's just how much bigger it was for. I don't know. It's just you gotta learn, dude. The world's and NASCAR is way bigger than little old Corey Heim, and it just pisses me off. Yeah, that's um. I wouldn't, yeah, under a normal circumstance, well, okay, the way he did it sucked, but under normal circumstance, I wouldn't have a problem with retaliating after he got spun out, especially yes. when it was something as as dumb as that. I mean, that was that was a dumb move by Host Far. It was never going to work. But it, under normal circumstance, I'm fine with that. Three yeah. laps away from the championship being over and a guy who had nothing to do with it gets totally fucked. I, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I don't know if that really, really sucks. Just it really sucks. There's uh, yeah. Like, I mean, rule number one, stock car racing too. We're not wrecking by without wrecking yourself. It's been a common topic recently for some. I mean, reason. that was definitely yeah. more of the Matt Kenseth method where you don't give a shit, but I guess, but dude, I mean, he didn't, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. So, Carson Osmar didn't take that championship from Corey Hunt. No, and I'll t- my reasoning for saying that would be, which I didn't actually watch any of it live. Obviously, I got home from World Finals Friday night and was like, I actually, I guess I could have watched the end of the race because I got home at midnight and didn't think it was still on, so I went about my business. Oh, um, yeah, did it last that long? Oh yeah, yeah. I guess it, was, it did. It, it ended past one o'clock Eastern time. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Like that's what everybody was complaining about. It was like the worst part was who let who let this atrocious thing. Start I think, at dude. I think my exact time. tweet was, I I got way more of this race than I paid for, and I still want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> from from what I've gathered, based on replays and tweets and whatnot, he still could have won the damn championship had he just drove. Yeah. No. Like, uh, yeah. I don't know about that. It was. He definitely over- had. There were he three laps had left, an and he oppor- was not close. Yeah, I mean, he he wasn't close, but he definitely had an opportunity to get back to and number two a position to win the championship, but just he didn't have it. With three to go, the guy you wrecked wasn't even going to win anyway. Yeah. What was the point? I yeah, just I mean, it it's just, and it made me so mad because. Well, obviously, I have sentimental ties to GMS. My grandfather worked there for, I think, four years. He was their first ever truck driver, hauler driver they ever hired. And I wanted to see them win the title in their last race. And Grant Enfinger, I don't know if either of you two have ever, like, actually met Grant Enfinger and talked to him. No. Certified good guy. Like, you meet, you meet, like him in, meet him in public, which I did. Actually, I met him at my old job. He was buying horse feed, of all things. You'd never know he's a NASCAR driver if you just looked at the man. He was wearing like jeans and a button down shirt. And I just happened to know who he was. And it was actually right after the new Atlanta test. And we sat there and talked new Atlanta and racing and all that for like 15 minutes. Total stranger. Didn't know who I was. Was just invested in the conversation and took the time of day to talk to me. Great guy. And the picture of him and Corey Heim outside the media center tells the entire story because if looks <laughs> could kill Corey Heim would have just lost all nine of his lives. Like yeah. he'd be a dead man. He had the super Ray, Superman X-ray that, vision on him or whatever. And I just, when I found out that Grant got screwed out of that whole deal, I just felt so bad because yeah. if, if anybody deserved it, it's that team and that race car driver and to and see dude, them get screwed that way. It sucks. And there's a lot. I saw some people like um, kind of upset about the way Grant handled the last lap, saying like he was really just going to go in there and send Ben Rhodes. It goes back to you know something we've said a lot. It's just it you it's eat or be eaten. Like I mean, it's you're if you don't run over somebody, somebody's going to run over you. That's how it always has been in the truck series. Not saying Ben did anything wrong because he didn't, but um it's just it's it's how you gotta race i mean you don't have to race like that but i mean it's 
You're not going to get very far without doing it these days. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I'll add to that and say, Grant actually wasn't going to clean him out. He was no, just going to try and move him. him. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. if Grant wanted to clean him out, he, he yeah. had the opportunity twice to clean him yeah. out. And he yeah, just shout out to shout out to Caden Honeycutt. For yeah. um, or was that his name? Yeah, cars tour driver Caden Honeycutt. Yeah, yeah, certified jackass. <laughs> like, just okay. Sends it three wide, going in the. I mean, he screwed any chance Grant had. Which fine, you you got. I get it. You're trying to trying to race. Maybe not the opportunity for it, but don't make yourself look like an asshole on Twitter when uh you try to say I wasn't even I wasn't even near Grant at the on the last lap of the race. And then old buddy Pulley has to pull up the video evidence and circle his truck for him and say, "Hey, blood, this you." Um, just... well, and also his co- his condemnation of uh, of Grant trying to get into the back of Ben Rhodes. There, dude, fuck you. He was three laps away and pulling away and got screwed. Like, yeah. so th- I don't know. Like, I... yeah, it's just it's it's just a product of truck series. Let's yeah. be real. Um, but Ben Rhodes won the championship barely. He had to ask pack Zane Smith and pray to God that damn tire hang hung on. But um yeah. <laughs> you make it sound like it was his fault. I know you don't mean to, but you oh, made no. it sound like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no. Zane missed a damn shift and we we, we were so confused at the grass. This is one of the moments, man. You just put your head down and you're like, fuck man, why won't this damn race end? Like uh, but from what I saw on Twitter, it was the most embarrassing thing that's ever been on a NASCAR racetrack. From what I saw in front of my own two eyes, I would have to concur. <laughs> like, it's yeah, just, it, it brings me back. Even the I, hot dogs sitting in front of us were done with it. That's bad. Yeah. I, I'm not going to turn this into a rant, but I will say the truck series. I don't want to even say anymore that it lacks an identity. This is its identity and it needs to change. And the only way I think that they're ever going to change the truck's identity is by creating them a new one. And that starts with changing the truck schedule where they don't go everywhere. The cup series goes. Yeah. There's no reason. And you know what? Maybe, maybe it would promote more of that at first, but when team owners got tired of replacing trucks every week, it would stop. There needs to be like, there's no reason the trucks aren't racing at South Boston and Berlin. I bet here's the thing. I heard like that should be the trucks. Not I I saw, I saw Ron Horner day Friday night and he was sitting there just vaping. He was sitting there with a cold beer. He owns a vape shop in Morrisville. So yeah. Oh really? Holy shit. I gotta Seth, go. gonna get you a vape. Um, but yeah, Ron Hornick, drink a cold one, full on vape boy status. Uh, whenever they talk to him a minute, just as nice as Ron could be. Um, and I just that little interaction with them, and I kind of thought about it leaving the truck race. Like, this ain't this ain't what Ron raced. This ain't what Mike, you know, it's like uh, ain't what the this ain't the gunslinger truck series. It's not the California kid, Ron Hornet's truck series, no more. It's it's pay the to play. Onions truck series. It's pay to play, and Daddy will pay for the wreck truck when I when I decide to yeah. take out whoever. So here's what the truck series really needs to do. Uh, the schedule, yes, but what they really need to do is start hard enforcement of rough driving penalties. I saw, yeah, yeah I absolutely. Heard, I heard absolutely. on the teardown they were like, well, they don't want they. I think I can't remember if it was Bianchi or Gluck. They said, "Well, they want the rules to be same throughout all three series, and so they don't want to enforce something in the truck series and not." Dude, it's Asinine. no, it's a feeder series. They're not going to learn. Yeah, they, it makes it yeah, is same. making your cup is des- devolving your cup drivers. Yeah, by by not enforcing this, that yeah, is it, all you're doing. It is devolving your entire sport because everything starts at the bottom. Yeah. It starts at the top, it starts at the bottom, and you meet in the middle, and we're not we're not doing a damn and, thing about it. And it comes from two things. There's two things that cause it. Number one, the money. Yep. Well, I don't have to fix the truck. Yep. I don't have to pay for it. Why Your do I regard. care? And number two, and I hate to say this because of how much good it's done for the sport, but a lot of these kids that are now coming from iRacing, 
doesn't matter when you wreck somebody on iRacing, you just get up from your computer. Yeah. They're invincible. They think they're invincible. Yeah. And for something, it's so, it's sad because that was the very, that was the first oh shit example of drivers from that product picking up negative qualities from it and applying it to real life racing. And I just hope it doesn't become like the theme. And like I talked to Joey Coulter about it, former NASCAR truck series driver, Joey Coulter. No, give him his deuce. Um, former NASCAR truck series winner. Winner at Pocono. At Pocono. Joey Coulter. We were talking for a while and I, I, I asked him about it. And when I did my interview with him, um, I asked him the question about the truck race and he said that it all comes down to respect. And he said that it needs to get back to how it was when he was coming up because he came up with people like Ron Hornaday and Todd Bodine and Mike Skinner that would whoop your ass if you did something like that. And they taught those guys respect. They taught them the right way of like, look, this is how you race people. And even in this series, and if you're not going to race the way that we race, you're not going to last around here. And unfortunately, we're missing that now because they're all that young crop of drivers that don't really have a care in the world. Yeah. I think and if I, we don't get back to that. It's never going to change. Yeah. To, to cap this whole thing, I think it, it comes down to three things that you said. I mean, it, it comes down to, to money comes down to lack of respect. And I think this playoff format also enables that. Yep. In a way too. So Ben Rhodes is the truck series champion. Lucky enough for us, he is he's done some growing in his day. Um, lucky enough, he he is one of the good guys in truck series, kind of been a staple there for a while. Obviously, we got a great Ben Rhodes, Ben Rhodes uh uh media center interview. Dinosaurs aren't real. Um that's, in case that's, you didn't know. Yeah, in case you didn't know. Um so yeah, oh, 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 you go watch the interview. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Did you see him pour beer on Rich Lucius when he walked? Yeah, in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm I'm for uh, Ben Rhodes winning the truck championships as long as we keep getting these good interviews. Here for it. Here for it. Yep. Uh, Xfinity. Um, really not much. Not a huge, not a whole lot to talk about other than the fact that Xfinity put on the best race of the weekend again. Go figure. Um, Cole Custer wow. is the champion. Um, I mean, it's something else. Another thing that we've been harping on for a while. Why, why run 25th in the Cup Series when you can go win an Xfinity championship? It just, it, not only does it, I, I think it, it would just be, better for your overall mental health yeah. but it, it also just brings your stock up cole custer's a nascar champion now so yeah yeah i mean it he didn't really set the world on fire like we thought he was but you know you don't have to yeah i mean i'm not saying he's not I, a deserving champion at all but yeah he um, definitely is but uh over racing I, I obviously called him winning like what seventeen races this year, so that didn't really pan out. Yeah. That didn't really pan out, but um, he uh, he did he did what he needed to and it counted. He had to back into getting into the championship four, literally back in. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> on fire and backwards, um, and then went out and ran a really good race. I mean, dominated the last half of the race. Um, had to survive an overtime restart, so. And and also, I don't think the door should be closed on on uh, Cole Custer as a cup driver. No, it's definitely not. Yeah, because he came in. <clears throat> we were having this conversation Friday night after the race. Saturday. He came in Saturday. Sorry. Um, he came in at probably one of the worst times to be a rookie, like we talked about with the 550 yeah. package. And then COVID too. COVID. And then right after that, Stuart Haas took a nosedive in performance. And then you got the new car too. I mean, yeah. So never had a chance, really. Yeah, never really had a chance. So going back and doing the Xfinity series is that has got to be the best thing he could have possibly done for his career. And now he's yeah. obviously a champion, so it obviously looks like the best thing he could have done. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like you look at the rest of SHR and Cup, other than Kevin Harvick, they're all in the mid to late twenties and early thirties or whatever yeah. in in the standings. So like, <laughs> I 
I don't know. There's no argument for me about yeah. whether or not he made the right to call or not. And I'm glad he re- I'm glad he resigned because I th- I think a couple years of just kicking ass because I think he's going to be a lot better next year. I, is just gonna it's gonna do wonders for his confidence to just kind of be like okay I I still can do this yeah and you know we see guys all the time I mean they don't peak you don't peak until your 30s and damn near 40s so I mean he he's got time he's he's got time he's he, he's still he was a young he was a young buck when he got into the Cup Series so yeah Chuck um i don't really have much to say because i actually didn't watch the entire race at all Jesus Christ. what i will say i was, he was at world finals no i was, oh, no, at, Caraway. I was coming Caraway. i was coming home i was coming home from caraway and then i was at dinner and then i found never mind i'm not gonna say it on the podcast um I'll tell you later um what i did see was a pretty cool video of tony stewart's reaction to cole custer winning the yeah. championship yeah. Just just for all the people that say tony stewart doesn't care about nascar anymore there's that that was pretty cool he cares um, about people. That's what's important. Other than that, we're going to do this thing we talked about earlier. Congrats to Cole Custer. I have nothing else to say. Good man. Good man. Good man. He's learning. Uh, um, all right. Cup race. Um, all right. So I had Ryan Blaney out in my round of 16. So I had him out in my round of 12. So I, I had him out, out in the round of eight. And okay. we thought you were insane. We yeah. thought you were literally <clears throat> insane. And we were right. <laughs> Be- uh, because Cannot Ryan- believe I voted the champion out in the round of eight. What a guy. Uh, yeah, that's insane. I don't know what, what you had doing that. Um, Ryan Blaney, I can't believe I'm about to say this, is a NASCAR Cup Series champion. What in the hell? Like, let's yeah. be real here. I mean, really weird. Well, I'll start. I'll kick off the conversation with this. <laughs> Casey Kane probably would have won a championship under this format in his heyday. Just saying. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> because, like, if they had this format back then, all he would have had to do is win at Charlotte and he'd be in a round of eight. Yeah. I mean, dude, let's be okay. So, what? Let's get it out of the system, then we'll. we'll We'll talk good about YRB. No critique of Ryan Blaney that has ever been given within reason has been wrong. None of it. Like, I mean, has, does he has he failed to execute more times than not in his entire career? Yes. yes. Does he lose his effing mind under pressure? Yes. I know y'all couldn't yes. hear it on Sunday unless you had a scanner. Oh, yeah, I did. Was, I did. I turned his, his radio the on. The entire race. The entire Dude, I, race. I heard a, I had a scanner. I turned his radio on. He was a one of the worst like meltdowns I've ever heard. He was threatening <laughs> to wreck Kyle Larson in stage one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the third, has he failed to live up to potential like up until this year? Yeah. He is and Kyle Petty called him. The Casey Kane. Everybody waiting for him to do shit, and he never does. And it, Cal Petty was right up until this year. Up until five weeks ago. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, he has the fewest top fives of any champion in the modern era. I mean, it's just... I mean, And th- here's the thing. It's not Ryan's fault. Ryan, but is he a deserving champion? He did everything he was supposed to do to win the championship. So yeah, he's a deserving champion. He he played by the rules and he used it to the best of his ability. And he's a Cup Series champion. Can't take it away from him. He will go down in history. Ryan Blaney's always is and always will be a Cup Series champion. Respect to him. But I'm not saying there should be an asterisk next to his name. I'm just saying let's not act like that everything we said before was just untrue and we were just wrong this whole time because we weren't. All right. So I'm pulling, I'm pulling up right now because it occurred to me just now that Ryan sets. Oh my God. It's actually worse than I thought. 
Um, this whole notion of, again, this comes down to the format. I'm not really going to beat the horse on this format. Actually, I have a, I have like a kind of a compliment on the format a little later. Um, but for right now, his stats across the board are in line with or slightly worse than they have basically every other year of his career. So nothing significantly changed. The only thing that changed this year is when he won races. Yeah. Obviously last year he didn't win races, but that's, that's kind of, I feel like that's kind of the outlier. He always had a win. And then the year before he had three. So really the only difference is when he won races, he won a crucial one at Talladega, which Mm -hmm. Brian's been a great super speedway racer his entire time in the cup series. And then he finally, finally closed the book on Martinsville. So the one thing you can say about Blaney for this year compared to the years before is he finally did something clutch and he could, he could not buy a clutch moment previously in his career. He would always disappear in a round of eight, but he showed up to Homestead this year, ran fantastic, was probably going to win that race. If it goes green, if Kyle Larson doesn't Kyle Larson at into the pit barrier Um, and then goes out and wins Martinsville. So realistically about three weeks of that, is what changed the narrative here because the overall stats are around the same. I'm going to put it like this. You need to win a NASCAR cup series championship in this day and age. You need three great races and six decent races. That's it. That's all you need. You need to win a race in the regular season. You need to have six decent races in the first round and you need to have a great race and probably a win to make it to the round of four and you need to have a great race to win the championship. That's it. That is the, that is the playbook to win this championship. And Ryan Blaney did that. And it's, it's what Penske has done to a T Penske. Everyone talked about how, um, how Hendrick and Jimmy Johnson and them had the old chase system figured out. Penske has this one down to a T. Oh my God. Down to a science. It is, It, it is. You look at Joey and and Ryan's, yeah, all three of their championships, they mirror each other. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, and and you can you can say that makes them undeserving, but that's the that's the, that's that's what they got put in front of them, and yeah, they do I, it they do it better than. Pretty much it's anybody what else. Say, it's what I said last year when Martin Truex missed the playoffs. He didn't do what he needed to do. That sucks, but he didn't do what he needed to do to make the playoffs. I don't feel bad for him. Ryan Blaney, he did exactly what he needed to do to win the championship. He got he he's got the cup. I got I do have some stuff to say about the format, but I want to let Chuck talk. I don't really have much to say because I think one of my only points you guys already brought up is like. For anybody that acts like this is some new thing, Joey Logano did the exact same thing a year yeah, ago, and yeah. he did the and exact same thing in 2018. And I think I think it was us last week that talked about this, about how championship four appearances are going to be looked at as like a really big stat yep. in the future. Yeah. And I think this is why. Because once you – it's more i hate to say it's more about getting there but like it's more about just getting there and giving yourself a shot because once you get there any one of the four can win so as we and it this format isn't going to promote the dominance like jimmy johnson had like jeff gordon had yeah we're we might not the days of seven time championship it's they're over we might not see somebody win Three. We'll be lucky to send we see somebody win three over the next 20 years. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So I think when we look back, it'll be more about well, how many times did they make it to give themselves that shot? Yeah. Rather than how many times did they pull it off for that one race out of the 36. And you look at the guys who have had the most championship four appearances, and they're they're guys like Kevin Harvick and Kyle it's, Bush it's and Martin Harvick, Truex and Bush, Denny Truex, Denny. Denny. Yeah. Joey and Brad. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the who's who of this generation of NASCAR. And like give Chase and, and now, you've, he, now you've transferred into the newer in generation and chase made three in a row and Larson yeah. and bell now have two. like, and he, here's what, here's what sucks the most about it. 
we can talk all the talk. We can talk all the talk. We can, uh, there's all the hype. There's all the metrics. There's all the stats. We can spit it all out of our faces until they turn blue, but nothing fucking matters. None of, none of the talk matters. We talked all year or all playoffs about Ryan Blaney. We talked, everybody talked all year about, about William Byron and how he's going to be unstoppable. And we talked about how fast Kyle Larson was. And we talked about how clutch Christopher Bell's been. This podcast is useless. It's fun, but it, it, it's all nonsense. Anything, and that goes for any podcast or any talk show or anything. And that's just the this format is a slap in the face to people who know the fucking sport. That's I mean, that's just point blank what it is. Like, I mean, because you can, like I said, you can talk all you want about it and spit as many facts at it, throw as many facts at the wall as you want. Doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And it just, no matter, like, no matter what your opinion is of the champion, of not just this year, any champion on this format, it just pisses me off. Yeah. No. I mean, that's well said. I don't have anything to add. I mean. Yeah. That's. uh, Yeah. I don't know. Um, I do have a question for you guys. Other than, like, the fact that racing is, like, what it is, it's different than other sports, how is, like, our playoff format different than other sports? Because I feel like the discourse is, I don't know, I don't watch other sports as much as you guys. The discourse on how we view the playoff format, I at least to me, seems like it's very different than how other sports view it. Is it just, like, because the playoff format is relatively new compared to that or like why do other sports talk about how bs like playoffs are or what what's the uh so it it depends on the sport um no one i don't think there's anyone out there that will really argue you that the nfl needs playoffs uh because everybody doesn't play everybody every year um so there's no real argument there there are arguments about something like hockey needing playoffs because everybody plays everybody multiple times a season and you acquire points throughout the season. So it's not like a huge topic, but it does come up occasionally. Cause I mean, the uh, English premier league runs on a point system. They don't have playoffs. Um, Baseball gets a lot of flack right now for the way they have their playoffs set up uh, with having your top teams taking a lot of time off or a week off. And then your wildcard teams playing. I'm not saying one way or the other, Chase. I'm just saying that is that is a topic of conversation right now. Uh, And your Phillies probably take advantage of that. But (laughs) anyway, probably um, I feel like I feel like NASCAR is the only entity right now where the the very idea of playoffs pisses people off. And I'll tell you exactly why. Because for every other sport. Whether or not you succeed in the playoffs, it is a team, a group of people, and it comes down to their execution, and that's it. If there is nothing else involved, there's no other gimmick. You go out there in the playoffs in football, if you don't play good football, if your quarterback has an off day or you guys can't make tackles on defense, you lose. There's nothing else like, oh, well, you can't do this or this or this. And if they get this special certain number of yards on one play, that neg- no, it's just you play football. And baseball, if you can't hit the ball, you're going to lose. If your pitchers are giving up hits, you're going to lose. That's how it is. In basketball, if you can't hit threes, especially in today's day and age, if, you're miss- if your team's missing every single shot, you can't get a guy out there to buy a bucket, you're going to lose. If you can't hold a team under a – 120 points or something you play terrible defense you're gonna lose it is what it is it comes down to your execution and that's it and nascar that is not true you can execute well basically perfect and it might not matter because some guy can i don't know ride around for two out of the three races and suck and then show up to one race and win and knock you out there it's it's just so many there's so many variables variables and gimmicks honestly. outside factors 
if, yeah. if, if I perfect, think I think per- hang on the perfect stat that that says this is <clears throat> is Kyle Larson's average running position this season is was seven I think point four his average finishing position I believe was like twelve five or maybe even it might have been fourteen five I can't remember exactly but so we'll call his, it six positions worse. we'll call it six positions so and. And I'm not saying that they got screwed, that they should have won the championship. They, He didn't execute. They didn't always execute. But the point yeah. is, is that racing is so chaotic that the guy who averaged, averaged running in the top 10, very close to the top five, had a finishing position well outside the top five. So, or outside the top 10. So that just, I think that stat illustrates how chaotic racing is. And the 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 farthest thing you'll get from that in maybe a football game is a team will have maybe a below average defense and somehow win 12 13 games in a season or you have the Minnesota Vikings last year that had 13 wins and a minus point differential but that was kind yeah. of really out of out of left field i think the perfect what would i know we've harped on what the format should be a lot but I think the perfect way to have a playoffs that resembles every other sport is if they did the playoffs how it's set up now, except it was strictly points and they made eliminations based off strictly points and like Winston Cup points. That would be what would most clearly resemble every other sport because one of the biggest variables is the fact that it doesn't matter whose stadium you're playing in in football. You're playing on a football field that's the same dimensions as every other stadium, and it doesn't affect how you play football unless you're playing in MetLife Stadium. Um, in baseball, yeah, the walls might be a little different. You have the same bat that you use in every single other 100. And I guess if you're in the playoffs, you're looking at close to 180 games. Use the same bat, yeah. and the concept is the same. Just because the field's a little different doesn't change where what you're trying to do when you hit the baseball. When you play hockey, well, every single hockey rink in the NHL has the same dimensions. Every single court in the NBA has the same dimensions. That's not true in NASCAR. We don't race at Martinsville 36 times a year. So some guys are better at some places than they are at others, and it gives certain people certain advantages, and that's why people complain about the playoffs so much is because it's not a stick and ball sport. We don't, we shouldn't be trying to resemble a stick and ball sport when it's so drastically different. Well, and that's like a good point too, with Phoenix being the championship race year after year, Ryan Blaney, a lot of people pinned him as the guy because he's so good at Phoenix. It's just like the Kyle Larson Homestead thing. Yeah. It's Which, the same thing. Yeah. And I think, I think it, it just proves, I get it. There's a lot of, things that go into putting together schedule but it's, the playoffs definitely should and they've done a better job lately of doing that shake up a lot more every year and especially the championship race if we're gonna keep it i i pitched an idea that just bullshitting um i wish we could like count on nascar to like do like the final four like college football does but we can't because chase elliott um oh i yeah. see what you mean yeah um but yeah, I don't know. Seth, give your positive about the playoffs and then we'll we'll move on. All right. So last thing negative before I do the positives <laughs> is well <laughs> gotta fit one more in. I gotta yeah. fit one more in. Um essentially what we do in the cup series and, and the Xfinity and trucks is imagine if in the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs, we did three sets of seven game series to get to the Stanley Cup final, and then the Stanley Cup final was one game. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we do. And yeah. that's that's the reason it's the same it's it's really the same thing in hockey. Anyone can win one game. It's very very difficult to go out and beat a team four times. So, yes. I feel like that's baseball's okay. the same way. Baseball, yeah, baseball, uh basketball would be the same. I just Any team can get hot off a certain pitcher. Yeah. Um so anyway, all that said, I do want to commend the playoffs a little bit this year because throughout the season or throughout the the playoff portion of the season we kept getting everyone always likes to post the the Winston Cup standings and I'll be honest I feel like 
the final eight or toward the final four of this season, I feel like the playoffs kind of showed who actually was better this year because I feel like we had a down year for the cup series. Like I was telling buddy on, on the way back today, the only guy with 20 top tens this season was William Byron. He had 21. Um, no one else had more than 19. I, I, that to me is a down season. Everybody was, everybody was running down a gravel road and flip flops this year. Yeah. And, and it really, what, so what the playoffs showed to me is who was actually, who was actually more consistently fast because yeah, everything was kind of, I say everything, not quite as bad as last year, but everything was kind of crazy this year. So I feel like the playoffs did a better job of showing who was fast all season. Yeah. And the Winston cup format kind of just showed you who cleaned up, which yeah. if that's, I understand there's merit to that too, but. If and it could I, be like that every year, you could take or leave either Winston Cup or playoff. If it was just if we could count on it to be like that every year, and we have maybe not one championship race. Yeah. But. Well, that. So yeah, I I genuinely I'm at the point now where I think this format would be. We could get the best of both worlds. We could get the best of both worlds if we just had three races in the final the final round and make it make it the round of eight. I don't think you'd, you'd want three races of four guys going for the title, three races of eight guys going for the title. I think that would be the best of both. I don't see why four would be bad for three races. Yeah. It's bad for one race. In my, in my opinion, I think it's, I will say about the Winston cup thing. I feel like it's almost kind of obsolete to look at that because hundred percent. Oh, it's not kind of obsolete. It is obsolete because the strategy is different. You stage oh, that race all, now. that too. Yeah. So yeah. like, there's nothing about today's racing. It's like looking at the Winston Cup that would be like, done the same if tomorrow they announced we're going back to the Winston Cup format. Every single team would completely change their plan for next year, and every single race would be run different differently. So you yeah, exactly in turn the results would be flipped upside down. Perfect example. At, Perfect example is Kyle Larson at Homestead. Well, here's a here's an even better example. Yeah. We talk about the champions of Winston Cup. You really think Jimmy Johnson and Chack and Nouse would have done the things they did midsummer after they were locked into the chase? You really think that they would have had the down six weeks that they had every single year, like clockwork, if they had had to put together a full season? No, they wouldn't have. They would have, they have won out. five in a row. Who knows? Maybe but, not. Yeah. yeah. But they, they would have been as maybe not as big of a dynasty, but they still would have been a dynasty, yeah. you know? So yeah, I don't know. Um, Brian Blaney's the champion. That's uh, just in. Sounds weird. It's it weird. It It weird. felt weird watching it. It did feel weird. Like, why it did not. It felt like I was watching like a, like a, like a video game yeah if like that's what it felt like it didn't need so i don't know oh i thought you were gonna say something (laughs) i thought about it It, it's just it's almost because he just feels like it's like he had i don't don't know how to say this in a nice way here no here i'm gonna say i think i know what you're about to try or we're trying to say i'm gonna try to say it in a nice way most guys got to lose one before they can win one Ryan Blaney hadn't lost one. He, he got here in ex- <laughs> Well, I mean, he hadn't been in position to win one and lost one. He he got in position to win and immediately won one. So it, it's not it, even here, really what I was going to say because so did Kyle and Chase in a way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you're that's right. your criteria, making it to the final four, we've seen that. Well, I mean, because well, right. I guess now. it's a little different because with Kyle. He dominated he the whole year. He kind of knew. Chase was basically the same thing. He showed up in the playoffs. And here's the thing. This is what I'm about to say is Chase solidified his championship in the years after it because he he did. He made multiple Final Four appearances. He obviously had a great year last year. Um, so I think if Ryan can go out the next three, four years, put together, you know, and keep – not even just the – just he keeps putting together seasons like this. If this is – 
the breakthrough year, and this is the Ryan Blaney we see consistently, you can't talk about this championship being, you know, any sort of way other than legit. Yeah. Uh, but I, if but if this is it, if this is all he does, then it's going to, if, you know, he's got to like stay consistent or else. And if Ryan Blaney don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, like I, like I said before, this talk don't matter. Like, I mean, Ryan Blaney don't give a shit. He's got the Bill France Cup sitting in his fucking house. Yeah. Like, he's, you know. Yeah. yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is no matter who won the championship, all of them in the playoff era, whether or not they deserved it that year, you go back and read all those names, and you're like, yeah, those guys are elite. They're the best of the best, like, hands down, top tier in the sport. I he just won a championship and I don't feel that way about Ryan Blaney yet. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like it feels like he's still not. Yeah. He won the championship, but it, like you said, it still feels like Kyle Petty's right. Like he still hasn't still hasn't arrived. He arrived for one, two races, but it's almost like you're looking at that and you get to that name. And at this point, it's like, really? Like, yeah, he, yeah. He I, did that because it doesn't seem like he's on the level to do that yet, but he did it. All right. Let's wrap. Let's wrap this part up, though. Uh, Ryan Blaney, though, he is like, I mean, it is that aside. It is good for the sport in a way because he is so popular and he is a great personality and he will be a good ambassador for the sport. So he, you know, he is our champion and I think he'll be a good champion. Yeah, especially um, good timing, uh, considering how down of year our most popular driver had i think yeah so, exactly so yeah. yeah um yeah uh ross chastain won the race he did that he give did. the man him yeah exactly give the man his I, dues i didn't know um, that because nbc didn't cover it at all yeah yeah even uh, at the track he only he went over to like the corner and just like celebrated by himself like yeah it, well, it, it i will tell you that the bills Bengals game on sunday night football was starting before they interviewed ross chastain on peacock so wow. if that tells you anything yeah man, we were home by then they didn't care they like hey he won let the me race tell you hold on, hold on let me it. also let me tell you who else doesn't care ross chastain yeah amen. don't give a fuck dude i mean Here's the thing. It is funny. It had to be Ross, right? <laughs> I, dude, here's dude. Ross Chastain makes history. That's what he does. He don't give a damn, dude. He don't give a damn. He makes history. That's what that boy does. I mean, he he went out there. He hail mailed his way to the championship four. He is bound by only the the walls on the racetrack. That's all he's. That's that's it. That is it. Oh, that won't last forever. And even that one, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, we all we all saw the meme of the Roval, him hopping the curb over the damn one and six. Um, so I mean, it, yeah, I mean, the he would he of course he'd be the guy who upsets the championship four for the first time. Actually, I'll be completely honest. So we know on this show, I I have I personally have not been a big fan of Ross Chastain. We I know have you have roasted Ross Chastain we on have, the show. I think that this is my this race is probably my favorite thing I've seen Ross do because he went in and did exactly what I've been hoping someone would do for a long time is tell the championship four to go fuck themselves. I'm trying to win yeah. a race. Yeah, exactly. And he went out and did it and raced him hard he raced him hard he wasn't picky about it he did it right if you're gonna do it do it like ross i never thought i'd say that (laughs) like yeah my god i couldn't believe it when i heard his interview he was like yeah i don't care i didn't care then i still don't care now he can be mad if he wants to like hell yeah yeah, ross tell him how it is yeah like i mean dude but 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 he was literally losing it for nothing on the radio it like, was like yeah. four seconds ahead Dude, of hey, Bell or, right, or Byron. Right, I get it. I get it. It's a stressful situation. You're getting backed up to your competition. I, I get but it. But he wasn't. He wasn't. But, they were gaining two tenths a lap. Yeah. But, bro, it ain't Ross Chastain's fault you ain't got the track position, my guy. <laughs> like, Dude, I mean, that's it. Ross Chastain makes history. Yep. I really thought Blaney, field and delivered. 
I really thought Blaney was going to screw himself when he punted Ross. Yeah. I was like, oh, you idiot. That is the last dude I would punt if, if I was leading the championship dude, race. If he'd have gotten in front of him, Ross would have absolutely given it back to him. Dude, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Dude, absolutely. A1 shot. It's when he, Ross is air blocking the hell out of Blaney, and Blaney flips him off in the car. And yeah. Ross, dude, Ross saw it. Yeah. He saw hilarious. it. He was looking in the rear view camera. I mean, Blaney's, he, Blaney's he's got sitting in the media gloves. center. <laughs> he said it in the media center. He's like, I was looking at the rear view camera, and I, you know, we're going down the straightaway, but I saw his hands moving and his whole bright ass suit moving in the car. I knew he was pissed off. I didn't give a shit. <laughs> so I mean, dude, funny. like, if he could keep his damn nose clean, I understand the hype and the 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 love for Ross Chastain. If he honestly, can keep his nose clean. that yesterday made me like. I gained a lot of respect for Ross yeah, yesterday. Yeah. That was fun Same. to watch. And how? And here's where here's what's weird. The one car won Kevin Harvick's first race, and the one car that. won Kevin Harvick's last race. The twenty four also won the pole for both. Yeah, that's also crazy. And also <laughs> weird. And also, the 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 next year's Bush guy won the last race of this year's Bush guy. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So I am going to say. I think that means it's the first race of Ross's Bush sponsorship. He needs to run the Harvick beer. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. They need to just go ahead and start that partnership out at the Clash. He needs to just have Chastain on there. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it. Keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> um. But no, I mean, I don't know. I, I give it to Ross. So now, buddy. Now I got to ask. When inevitably Bush Light Watermelon comes out, will you drink it now? I mean, I am excited I love for watermelon. Bush Light watermelon. I definitely, I, yeah, I'll definitely crush a few. Okay, because earlier, few before watermelon beers, before you were against the idea, so now, yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, Abby was like, she was on the fence about Ross, and she was upset that he it's won almost Kevin's fitting. last race. But then, like, she, we heard his comments about Kevin and the post race, and. Mm-hmm. Him being the new Bush Light guy and what he said about Blaney, she's she's like, okay, well, that's cool. And like, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something about NBC for a second. Like, I get it. There's four dudes racing for a championship, but that guy just went out and like kicked all of their asses. Yeah, yeah. give the man dudes. He led half the race, yeah. whooped their ass. Said, you yeah. know what? You may be racing for a championship, but I don't care. I'm better than you. I'm winning this race. He did that. They showed him a couple times in the last lap. They showed both of them cross the line. I'll give him that. And then we never saw Ross Jastain again. Like they they showed him doing a burnout past Blaney. Like that, that was when we saw Ross was when he went through Blaney's camera shot. And then it's like uh, it's like the main. It's like. I can't describe it without sounding. I literally, I listened to Blaney's interview, flip the game to Eagles Cowboys, or flip the channel to Eagles Cowboys. Flip back. They had interviewed Bell and By- or Byron and Larson, and they were about to do Ryan's championship thing in Victory Lane, and they still hadn't interviewed Ross. And this was like twenty five minutes later. That's and then I see like. An hour later, the interview from Peacock gets posted, and you can tell how long it's been because they're all in Victory Lane, and the Victory Lane celebration has long been over, and Ross is, like, crushing a beer. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. you can tell how long it's been since the celebration started b- before they did. Oh, wait, that guy won the race? Maybe we should interview him. I don't yeah. know. Like maybe yeah. we could at least show him smashing his yep. watermelon okay. or something. Like, yeah, it's so, ridiculous. For the record, Ross led 157 laps, and the championship four combined led 97. So, yeah, and 95 yeah. of those were William Byron. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else, what else to say. Yeah, actually, I do. I have one more thing to say. Okay. Big time Ross Chastain, man. Anyway, um, hyphen, yeah. Um, uh, was Phoenix a good race? I'll let Chuck go first since he watched on TV. Yeah, 
good no terrible no it was just kind of nah like it it wasn't as bad as last year's i never i never was watching the race and thought man this race sucks but i was also never watching the race and was like man this is awesome like it was just kind of it was an improvement from last year and it was an improvement from the spring but nothing really stood out about it it was just kind of average and maybe that's because i was a little more invested than last year but it was still just kind of average all right and from the stands i pretty much think the same it was a solid enough phoenix race better than last year better than the spring um but not a fantastic race yeah yeah like we've been harping on phoenix is a great facility but you got you got to put you got to do better than average to you know win my vote to keep the championship race for the love of god put those blue and red rumble strips down on the dog leg dude no we need just put asher turf down there do that i mean dude the apron at phoenix is as stupid and as frustrating and it's in the same vein as as arrow blocking like it is it is that like it it is every part of like it just neuters the racing it it just, i mean you don't it's it's the same it, in my opinion it's the same as chopping a guy's nose off yeah cuz it's just you can just defend by being less of a race car driver but even then even then we talk a lot of shit about phoenix the xfinity race was pretty good i thought it was a very very solid race so we get the cup cars figured out at some point we could put an okay we could put a pretty okay race on i think yeah that doesn't mean we shouldn't reconfigure the track a little bit or i i would i would like a little less banking in turn three and four if i'm being completely honest yeah yeah i mean we saw the race we had at new hampshire yeah that was the number one comparison to phoenix for the longest time with new hampshire new hampshire put on a great race with this car yeah so yeah uh um, i don't i don't know that adding turf down there and making them follow each other through the dog leg would make anything better though it would make you have to run through three and four a lot better you yeah. wouldn't have as much because when you make a mistake now you grab a gear and then dive down to the bottom of the apron and and make up all the all the time you lost yeah yeah i, I get and it also I just... you would be you wouldn't would you not be heading into turn one faster probably yeah yeah exactly and you have to slow down for the corner more which is always better yeah um yeah i mean that's i yeah i mean we kind of said it right there um it's been 10 years it's time for this experiment to go <laughs> yeah um highlight of the race for me was kevin harvick leading laps in his final cup series race yep i mean dude that was all i wanted out of this weekend that i mean that was if that happened that was just gonna be that was just gonna be gravy and he he went up there and took it wasn't it that was the best part about it too is it wasn't on he didn't get off pit road first and and you know hold it for a couple laps he went up there and took it and he showed everybody hey i'm just as good as i once was and i'm good as good once as i ever was or whatever that damn song is <laughs> but yeah you got it but um yeah i don't know that was um that was cool that was, was really cool and um, the the whole place was into it when it happened too. And, oh my god, dude! Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a go off. On, I'm a give a I don't know what I'm call give a little a little homage to Kevin Harvick. Um, I mean, he had the he had the impossible task. I'm a, I have a whole like essay, if you will. Um, that I'm gonna read off here a little bit. He had the impossible task of replacing Dale Earnhardt, and yeah, no one can replace Dale Senior, but for a lot of people, he did. 
and he's the only one that can remotely understand the pressure those moment pressure in those moments that Dale Jr. faced. And he and he had to oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to hold it together. Um anyway, he's the only one who could understand the pressure that Dale Jr. faced in those moments. And he had to pick up the pieces of that three team and move us along. And he said it many times, no pressure will ever match that. No championship, no anything will ever match the pressure that was his very first cup race. And there's something to be said about how lucky Earnhardt fans and NASCAR fans are to have him come along and be who he was and his attitude of, I don't want to be Dale Earnhardt. I'm my own man. I want to do it my way. But hell, that was the most Earnhardt thing about him was the that exactly. Um, I mean, it's the, it's the end of an era. I mean, Winston, the last person, you know, to run in the Winston Cup era as far as full-time drivers. He is the last connection we really have to Dale Sr. on the racetrack. And he went out, you know, a winner. I mean, yeah, he didn't win in his final year, but he was competitive. Um, he was huge for the sport. And I think a lot of us started to realize, a lot of other people, I always knew it. A lot of other people, like, wanted, I noticed, latched onto that in the final you know, weeks of his career. And, yeah, I think the bulk of us, the bulk of us grew up in those glory days of NASCAR. You either grew up in it or you lived it. And I think the nostalgic, the nostalgia that Kevin Harvick holds is something that we're all going to miss. And, yeah. And that's without giving stats. Ain't a damn stat in there. Man won 60 damn cup races and championship 812 starts, Daytona 500, 121 national wins, Xfinity titles, truck owners titles. I don't know. Most of, I don't know. Yeah. I'll just add a little bit of that to the bit to that and say, I talked to Abby about it today because she's, she's sad because now she has to pick a new driver. And obviously she's not been in it nearly okay, as long as you Get on with your thing. <laughs> I told her Rather than be sad that he's no longer in NASCAR, she needs to appreciate the fact that she could not have picked a better first driver. Yeah. Because until the end of time, Kevin Harvick will be relevant in NASCAR. Kevin Harvick will be a legend in NASCAR. And she yes. can always say, anybody that cheers for Kevin Harvick can always say, yeah, my guy was one of the greats. And nothing can ever take that away from anyone that is a Kevin Harvick fan. And it's, I'm, I think we're all sad that he's gone. Yeah. I'll tell you what, like, probably the most impressive thing about Kevin Harvick, aside from the wins, is everything he had going on personally, as far as dealing with what he had to deal with when he came into the sport. He found a way to leave the sport better than sorry he found a way to to leave it better than he found it yep well from a bit more of an outside perspective um it kind of took me a long time personally to get kevin harvick i guess um kind of just thought he was an asshole there for a long time eventually realized Same. yeah eventually realized that kevin is like buddy said kevin was just the embodiment of uh, it really embodiment of the old school way of doing it and kept that through his entire career and coupled that with his 
just absolute inability to give a fuck um, <laughs> in the best way possible. In the best way possible. Just, I don't know, dude. Like, just no one, no one recently showed up, kicked your ass, and just looked nonchalant about doing it like Kevin did. And not that he didn't get excited when he won, but like he expected to do it. And I don't know. There's just something there's something so fulfilling about watching a guy in his element do his thing and do it to the highest degree possible. And Kevin embodied that for the majority of his career, even being at a fledgling RCR and being at an inconsistent oh. Stuart Haas. I mean, the last three years of his career are if you're not in the know, don't look as great on paper, but the job he's done just the past three years is nothing short of incredible, really. Um, and it may be the most pivotal moment of this sports history. He was the guy that stepped up and carried it along. He was the perfect one to do it. And yep. we're damn lucky that he was that guy. I'm damn lucky that he was my driver. Or I'll say, well, he never won't be. <laughs> I'll say one more thing, and it's like, even if you weren't a Kevin Harvick fan, for better or worse, the man left behind so many memories that all of us will always have as NASCAR fans. And I like, I just look at, then not all of them are great, but you appreciate them. Like I look at that wall of die cast behind Buddy, and there's a certain Outback 2016 Kansas win car that I can't stand looking at. But you know what? I'll never forget that race, even if he did beat my childhood driver that's since retired. But it's like I look back now and I appreciate, and I'm like, yeah. I might not have been happy that Kevin won that day. And as a former Carl Edwards fan, I might've been pissed that he won that day, but I look back on it and I appreciate it. I'm like, you know what? Kevin Harvick's a legend. And like, there's, I got to witness whether I liked it or not. One of the greatest drivers that has ever been in this sport, go heads up with my favorite driver and beat him. And I'll always appreciate the fact that I got to grow up watching Kevin Harvick drive a race car. And it just gives you a really good appreciation for the sport to know that you watch somebody, I guess, create that big of a legacy in something you care about that much. He's, he's much bigger than the stats will ever reflect. That's, uh, don't, I think they that, don't make that them like that anymore. Perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> nope. They don't make them like that no more. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It was, it was obviously, you know, emotional weekend. I watched him get in his car for practice the last time. I watched him give him his helmet at the beginning of the weekend. You know, I, wa I watched him when he came in the garage and saw these kids sign the car. I was listening to the radio with my scanner when his kids came on and, you know, said what they said on the pace laps and you know it you know obviously the race was what it was it was emotional and there ain't I can't think of another guy I mean yeah Jeff Gordon in his last race or well that wasn't even his last race never no. mind <laughs> um, <laughs> no driver in their last race did what I feel like did what he did. I mean, he, he went out as competitive as anyone has ever been. Wow. And I got this, I sat there and I was intentional about the watch. moments. I was intentional about the, what, what are y'all? We could, at? we could think of, I a could guy think of one that was pretty competitive in his last race. Still not very happy about it, but. I won't take away from your moment. <laughs> oh, okay. That wasn't Those supposed to be his last circumstances. race. That was not supposed to be his last Those race. Those are different circumstances. Um, But I was just, I was very intentional about the weekend and trying to soak in every moment. And 
I remember I, you know, we crossed this the finish line. I watched it happen. That was it. That's the end. That's that's the end of the 23 year reign that was Kevin Harvick. And I watched him get out of the car and he was emotional, but he was content. And I think that he carries carried himself in a way that, you know, every Harvick fan or every race fan can should should be able to carry themselves through his retirement, however you feel about it, is you know, don't be sad it's over. Be glad that happened. Here's the thing I'm really glad about with the whole Kevin Harvick thing is he got to go out still being great. Again, the stats aren't going to show it, but Kevin Harvick did go out as a great driver. Um, he has his health as far as we know. So mm-hmm. that's that's a plus. And he got to he got to experience the full um, love finally, because Kevin hasn't always gotten the love. No. And part of that is because he's kind of abrasive. But yeah. so he got I mean, he got some of the loudest cheers all year. And I think that I don't know how much that means to Kevin, but as a fan of the I'll tell you right now, as a fan of the sport in general, and by the sport, I mean, racing, of course, NASCAR is not a sport. Um, as a fan of the sport in general, it it makes me happy to hear the amount of people that appreciate a legend. Kevin didn't want to go out like this. He wanted to just hang it up and go out the Carl Edwards way. But he said it multiple times this year. He's glad he didn't because I'll put it like this. I hate to keep bringing up the Dale Earnhardt comparison, but the more this season has gone on and more I've kind of looked at, you know, I pay attention a lot to the psychology of racing and like, and the more and more I look at it, the more parallels there are between Earnhardt and Harvick. And he, you know, Earnhardt is obviously abrasive. And I feel like the, they, on a larger scale, Earnhardt was, but they were largely this, had the same relationship with the, with the fans. You, you loved them, you hated them, you know, whatever. And I feel like he got the flowers that Earnhardt got that Earnhardt didn't get to experience. And that's pretty damn cool. So, I don't know. I, I walked out of that racetrack yesterday. I walked to the stop, top of the steps and y'all walked forward and I kind of stopped and looked back and looked down at that car and I was satisfied. For your sake, I'm happy you got to experience that. Obviously, I didn't. Happy's so. in the room somewhere. Well, yeah. okay, I'm not happy. I am pleased that you got to experience that moment because it's something I wish I had gotten to experience, and I wish hard to appreciate that moment if you replay it again, but I wish I had been in the know to appreciate that moment i'm glad i'm glad you got to and it 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 kind of kevin said it this weekend they asked him you know when did you know you made it in the sport and he said not until this weekend i didn't know i made it in the sport until this weekend because i'm going out my way and he said that's that's when he understood that he made it so in a way hopefully you can take some souls from that chuck because carl went out his way he went out because he wanted to so Yep. But um Yep. Sundress and dumbass. <laughs> yeah, we could do that this week. Yeah. Um all right. So Let's, uh go ahead, Seth. All right, so I'm sure we have a wide array of sundresses. So I picked Ross Chastain for going out there and battling the fuck out of the championship four drivers and, and winning it. I've been, I've been wanting someone else other than the championship four to win for 10 years now. So it finally <laughs> happened. Um, so yeah, Sundra. I'm going to, I'm going to say a little different take on sundress, but uh, Zeb wise for being okay. And okay. being able to walk and still drive a race car. 
because uh, I was sitting in turn four at Charlotte on Thursday night when I watched his car flip into the outside wall, which, you know, sprint cars tend to do. But what they don't tend to do is hang the throttle in the middle of the wreck and proceed to do two more backflips when the rear tires hit the ground and then spin in a circle for another minute because the throttle was hung and wouldn't cut off. So glad Zeb's okay and we'll be able to drive a race car again. Um, Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to explain that at some point. Yeah, we will yeah, one day, probably. Um, but um, got a weird text. Dumbass. Dumbass. All right, so I have an honorable mention, dumbass, and then my actual dumbass. My honorable mention is Caden Honeycut. Um. You're a dumbass. Um, we already went into that. And my other dumbass, my actual dumbass, is is Ryan Blaney for having a complete fucking meltdown on the radio when you're three, four seconds ahead of everyone you actually have to beat. Um, just like take a chill pill, my guy. It's it's not that serious. I mean, you embarrassingly are the first champion to not win the final four race, but uh anyway, I thought that was dumbass worthy. <laughs> Okay, hold on. I do want to say something. Doesn't it kind of go along with the Ryan Blaney narrative that he would, of course, be the first guy not to win the yeah, race? It does, actually. And it goes right along the, the line of Ross Chastain's narrative to be the first guy. <laughs> yeah, All is right in the world. It really is. <laughs> Nothing out of the ordinary happened this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, well. In the cup race. Okay. Chuck, who's your dumbass? Oh man, who's my dumbass? I guess my dumbass is gonna have to go to Corey Heim. I was about to say if you if none of us were gonna say it, I was gonna say that's a what question. a dumbass. And to even go into the media center and not even acknowledge that what you did was stupid and screwed over the other guy. Yeah, what a dumbass. Yeah. Um, my dumbass is gonna be. Whoever painted the restart zone in the wrong fucking place. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? That just added like the icing on the cake to whatever the fuck that truck race was. Dude, I mean, talk about running around with like chicken with your head cut off. That was everybody Friday night. Yeah. It Honorable was... mention to whoever let that race start at 10 Eastern time. Yeah. I mean, every race doesn't have to cater to the East Coast time swing. Oh, wait, I feel like that's what we talk about every week with the West Coast time. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you know what, though? I, all of us were kind of tired. Well, I didn't watch it, but everybody else that did was tired of watching it at 1.30 in the morning after they put on that I was tired to watch. I was tired of watching it at 10.30 in the evening. So was the flag man. Did you see that? Yes. Dude, that was that. funny. Yeah, that was <laughs> I feel you, bro. That flag man almost quit on the spot. He almost dropped his flags on the racetrack and just left. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he should have. That would have made for a hell. It was already an, supposed to just entertainment at that Actually, point. I have another dumbass. There, this weekend was just full of dumbasses. Um, my other dumbass is the people who were bitching that NASCAR didn't throw a caution for who the fuck was it that wrecked on the second to last oh, lap of the Tyler track race? Ankrum. Tyler Ankrum. Oh. Uh, everyone bitching that they didn't throw a caution for that. Oh my God. We were 179 laps into a 150 lap race. It didn't need to go on any longer. <laughs> no, we did not need a caution for that. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. Picks. I'm picking. Well, no, what? You don't have to pick any. <laughs> I mean, I guess um, we could pick for the South Carolina 400, but yeah. I guess we can we can do that next week. Um, yeah, um, I have no clue, honestly, who won I, the picks. Officially. I picked Larson. I think I, I picked that cheated up 24 car. Okay, who did I you also pick? picked Larson. But okay, I picked so Harvick to win the race. Yes, I lost. You picked Harvick to win, the, so I guess I win technically. Yeah. 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 I think it's pretty safe to say we don't have official, but I think it's pretty safe to say Seth won the picks championship. Yeah. 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 I kind of still need to tally up for sure, but yeah, yeah. I I definitely sold the bag there the last few weeks of the year. That's a back to back baby. 
Cool. We'll get you. We'll we'll get you a participation trophy. Just wait till next year when mine actually count. Okay, I'm gonna go three Pete. No, you're not. I'm just gonna start talking shit now. Might as well. <laughs> I'm actually actually you probably will because I have the absolute worst luck ever. I'm I'm a curse. Oh no, to dude! I had I everything under the sun happen to me. I had Ryan Priest beat Chris Rebell at New Hampshire this year. That that actually happened. That happened. I was pretty I, pissed off. Ryan Blady actually won Martinsville for me when I picked him. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? Yeah. I don't um, even remember who I picked at Martinsville. Like, I it doesn't does it matter? I picked somebody really dumb. I think. Well, I picked, you should um, remember it because you had decided to look it up in the middle of the show last week. Um, I never found it. Well, okay, that's fine. Anyway, um, so this has been the Big Motor Small Blade Podcast. Um, we will do at least one more show before the season ends. Um, we have some stuff planned in the off season. We're not going to say what because we fail to execute sometimes. Um, sometimes, sometimes, yeah, a lot of times, yeah. But um, we do have some stuff planned in the off season. But we do have at least one more show planned for next week. Um, but before then, you know, just thank you everybody for listening all year, um, and watching all year. And if you haven't subscribed or, uh, liked or followed or left a rating or any of that, please do that on this video right here. Leave a comment, share it with your friends, share it with your enemies, share it with your frenemies and your enemigos as well. Tell them um, how dumb we are, whatever, whatever you want to do. You it, know? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, just hate, share it. I don't give a damn. Um, thank you to Chuck for for joining us here. Thank you, Caleb, for all the episodes he was on, and we're gonna bring him back um, at some point. Um, was anybody else on this year? I don't think so. I don't. Yeah, I don't. If if you were on and we forgot about you, well, sorry, it's your fault. <laughs> um, any, anyway, um, yeah, thank you guys and. You know, it's been a been a fun year, been a weird year, been an emotional year. Been a, I don't know. Yeah. Go fuck yourself.